Hi, Long Range Hunting. Welcome to episode two of our ballistic gel testing. What do we have? We are doing tests with the Hornady A tips. It's a new bullet out from Hornady. Um, it's their new top of the line, designed primarily for competition. But I always get the question: Can you use them for hunting? The answer: Simply yes. Now, this, to my knowledge, is the only gel test out there. I've never seen it. Hornady might have done some. I'm not sure. I know the guy that did the testing for this. Um, he's hunted with them, was able to kill with them. I know plenty of other people that use them and hunt with them and had amazing results with them, but there has been confusion. And part of this video series um, on studying terminal ballistics with gel is to educate people. Because on the animal, it's sometimes hard to see. You can't see that temporary wound cavity, that hydraulic shock or hydrostatic shock. Um, and really what people are only seeing for the permanent wound cavity is, you know, they might see a hole through the heart or they're seeing an entrance and exit hole. And... The entrance and exit hole really doesn't tell a lot as far as the entrance. Um, the exit hole will a little bit more. Uh, it depends on how the bullet performs and your impact velocity and impact resistance. But the ATIP hands down has been my number one request. Now, they are expensive. That's the one thing that I think Hornady messed up with is the price point. I think they alienated a lot of people that would gladly pay and use a bullet like this. As far as reloading, it is a phenomenal bullet. It's incredibly accurate uh, and it's easy to lump. It's very easy to reload for and load for accuracy. It's not jump sensitive. So <clears throat> just like the ELD match, it's very easy to load. So you're not sitting there struggling, having to sit there and mess with, you know, how far off the land you are. Now, as many of you know, not only am I not sponsored, so all this comes out of pocket, but I've also got to travel. Um, there's no place locally where I can do this. So a friend in Alabama has or has a 300 yard personal range that I can use, which is where I did this testing and some more. Now, because I can't get the distances that I need, I'm looking at having to do reduced loads. Now, I'm not shooting these things at point blank. I have 300 yards to access and use, but I do have to reduce those loads in order to get those lower velocities that you know, to show the performance, especially when this is generally aimed at long range. Now I can go up to Louisiana and utilize the range there, but not only do I have to travel for, you know, half a day, but, and take a couple days just to do it, but I also have to rent out the entire range. Now I am going to do that at some point, it gets expensive, but uh, Buddy's helping me out with that as far as, you know, getting me in on that range so I can do this testing. But I did a few different tests. <clears throat> now. Now, because I do all this on my own, it does tend to be a little slower, especially with bullet availability, trying to find stuff. Um, again, it, these videos have cost me a lot of money out of pocket. Now, a couple friends have stepped up. Some very good people have stepped up and sent me bullets, which really helps me out financially because I'm not having to buy a box of bullets I don't use and then only using a handful of them and then the rest are just sitting there and I'm stuck with bullets that I don't normally use. Their generosity, I really want to say thank you to all you guys um, that did that. It allows me to test those bullets and do a broader spectrum. I think we have nine bullets now that I can do the comparisons on. A uh, buddy of mine in Oklahoma sent me these. He shot an elk last year at 590 yards and anchored it on the spot. Said the terminal performance was great. Now, I, I know a lot of people that killed with these. They've had great results with them. But actually seeing what it does on gel is really what we wanted to see with these tests he is primarily going after elk but i'm doing different animals at different times so i'm going for a test that's mo as most anatomically correct as possible a lot of people what they do is they'll just grab a whole gel block they'll shoot through it they might throw a tanned hide or you know a hardened hide in front of it and shoot through or they'll try to you know <clears throat> shoot a brisket or you know there, there's people try all different kinds of things but this is the most accurate way I can find to really show people, because you're not going to see that temporary wound cavity, that hydraulic shock and hydrostatic shock on the animal itself 
because it happens in a blink of an eye. I mean, even on gel, you have to slow it down so that you're able to see that. Now, what I'm doing is I have actual untanned deer hide. And when I switch animals like elk, I'm going to have elk hide for that. But it's actual whitetail hide, untanned, soft, you know, wet, um, and then deer meat, and then the vitals. Now, everything is correct for the penetration to, from the skin to the penetration to the skin to the vitals depth and the vital depth itself. Now, a lot of people have confusion. And part of this video series not only is to show you the performance of different bullets and their limitations match compared to uh, hunting bullets, etc., and build a database where you can look at real results from both in the field and these controlled test results and understand and make a better choice, but it's also going to debunk a lot of stuff. And one of them has to be the most common thing I ever hear. Well, that would work on a 200 pound whitetail, but it wouldn't work on an 800 pound elk. Well, one, Weight is absolutely irrelevant. You're not shooting a block of clay. You're not even shooting an 800 pound animal. You're shooting a section of it. And the weight of it doesn't even factor in how that bullet performs. Um, <clears throat> now, your bullet construction, your impact velocity, and your impact resistance is. Now, the height itself, as I showed in the last video, these bullets just punch through. You're talking about a very thin piece of skin that these bullets are going through at thousands of feet per second and they're blowing through and generally speaking all you're going to see is a hole you're just going to have a bullet hole no different than if you shot a cardboard or a piece of paper what's really causing most of that expansion is under the skin to the vitals that meet the bone the connective tissue that's what's really giving you your expansion and so it's judging it on how it's going to perform when it's going to open up now this test was done with an impact velocity of 2500 feet per second now I ran the numbers for where he's hunting as far as elk and as far as him looking at either a mountain whitetail because a lot of people don't know there are mountain whitetails um, but there's not a whole lot of difference between the elk and the deer the deer is three inches to the vitals an elk is four so you only have a difference of one inch there uh, a whitetail deer has 10 inches depth of vitals and an elk has 15. so you're only looking five more inches of vitals and you're only looking another inch of penetration. Now the density of the elk itself, the meat and stuff is going to add a little more impact resistance, but all that's going to do is aid you in expansion. Now I ran the numbers here um, for where he hunts roughly. And so I went by 6,000 feet of elevation. Uh, I looked up the average temperatures, everything entered that into the ballistic calculator. And this shot up at where he's hunting would replicate him taking a 700 yard shot. Uh, we got wonderful uh, <clears throat> we got wonderful performance as you can see there is a beautiful uh permanent wound cavity there we definitely achieved hydraulic shock and the difference is is hydraulic shock is <clears throat> an enlarged version basically of that temporary wound cavity of hydrostatic shock. So with hydrostatic shock, you're going to get that temporary wound cavity. It's going to cause damage, cause stuff to rupture, etc. And then it's going to shrink back and you're left with that permanent wound cavity. Now they'll think because they only see a small entrance hole that it didn't perform or even the exit hole that it didn't really dump energy. They'll say, oh, well, it did expand some, but it didn't blow a giant hole or the bullet did not exit and just had a pencil hole through. The entrance hole. Again, as I showed in the last video, hides really don't do anything. It's like punching through paper. Unless you're getting up into like elephants, and even elephants, 
that hide really isn't doing much to that bullet. It's still that penetration of meat, bone, and everything else that's really causing that expansion, not the hide itself. Now, if a bullet doesn't exit and it stops inside the animal, that's not a bad thing. Energy is a potential. You know, you'll see on a box ammo, you know, this velocity, this energy. Well, that's not actually correct. That is the potential for energy. That bullet has to perform in order to dump that energy. And so if that bullet has hit, expanded, and stopped on the opposite side, that means that that bullet has expanded as much potential, potential energy as possible into that animal. Now, pass-throughs aren't bad either, but as I've talked about before, that's more of an archery thing. When I archery hunt, I want two holes because of a blood trail. Bullets and arrows shouldn't even be compared because they're not even remotely the same. They don't kill on the same principles. Yes, they both have to do with blood loss, but the bullet has a completely different performance on how it does it versus an arrow. In conclusion, as far as the A-tips go, phenomenal bullet. I really wish that Hornady would drop the price some. I think that they would make a lot more money. Um, if you really want to run a really accurate bullet, yes, you can use them. If you know you can't afford to do that, I would go with the ELD Matcher, a different projectile, the Sierra TMK, uh, the Burger Hybrids, which we did testing on and uh, got a couple shots with that. Um, unfortunately, with this, there was a mix-up. I grabbed the wrong stuff, and so I only had one load of the A-tips when I went there. And so I'm going to have to actually go back and do the other velocity shots on that. It left a phenomenal permanent wound cavity. It did tremendous job on the energy, even breaking that table. Um, it blew right through. It would be no issue for a white-tailed deer or an elk. Um, I'm anxious to really see the limits of this bullet because every bullet has its limits. Being able to uh, not only get the higher velocities next time, uh, but also to try to get those lower velocity impacts and find out what the minimum impact velocity is and how that bullet performs. Now, I'm going to continue because, I again, this wasn't the only block I shot. I had to do multiples at one time. Um, I'm going to keep working on those videos and editing and everything and getting them up for you guys. So stay tuned for episode three. Uh, next, we're going to be covering the Burger Hybrids. Thank you again for everybody that sent in bullets to help me out. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to all the members for all your support through all this and help. And, uh, you know, thanks for the new subscribers. Welcome, you guys. I hope everybody learns a lot. Uh, any questions, just comment below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. If you're in the group and have comments, when I link this to the group, uh, you can just ask like normal or message me. So, happy hunting.